So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hi, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Natasha Nazarali. I'm the program manager of the, the ZEG MBA. Um, and uh, we have been having a lot of webinars with all of our partners. And this particular one uh, will focus on our immersive experience in San Francisco. And there is no one better to share with us details of the program than, than our guest. So our, our guest is Rebecca Tower. She's a, a professor and also the director of executive education at the University of San Francisco. Uh, she studied business administration, marketing and consulting, and she also has an MBA. So maybe you have a few questions on that also. Uh, I'll ask you to write your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, so at the end, I'll approach them and we'll, we'll share the questions with Rebecca and she'll share with us her experience. Now I'm going to give the virtual floor to Rebecca and um, thank you for joining us, Rebecca. And I'm also anxious to hear a little bit about this experience. Wonderful, excellent. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. Well, it's very nice to meet you all. Um, I look uh, forward to hopefully meeting you all in person in the future. Um, I will uh, be glad to talk to you about our program. Our program is usually called the Silicon Valley Immersion Program, um, and we invite people from all over the world uh, to join us for this um, time together. We've been um, doing this program for more than 10 years, um, and we have thousands of um, graduates from this program and a network of folks um, who um, are connect, stay connected with the University of San Francisco. Um, and they're really from all over the world. Uh, we've been working with um, ICG for more than 10 years. I think you guys were with us from the very, very beginning. Um, and so we always value your partnership. And I'm very glad to be here today um, to tell you just a little bit more about the uh, immersion program, as well as to answer any questions that you have. I'm very excited about the um, the additional changes that they've been making uh, to the MBA program. Uh, I've seen some of it, um, some of the program planning, and it looks very exciting. Um, all, a lot of the topics are areas that uh, we're also focusing in here in Silicon Valley and in San Francisco. Um, so I thought it was all very, very appropriate. So very glad to be here today and very happy to share um, with you what we have uh, about this program. I will see if I can share my screen, which it looks like I can, which is great. So go ahead and share my desktop. Hopefully you guys can see um, the video here. I thought the best way would be just to provide a little, uh, provide the video to kind of ground us all on what exactly this program is, um, and then we can talk a little bit more. University of San Francisco School of Management's Silicon Valley Immersion Program is a unique opportunity for groups of at least 15 executives or entrepreneurs or graduate students from across the world to come to San Francisco and Silicon Valley for three to 10 days to learn all about innovation and entrepreneurship. Silicon Valley Immersion Program not only provides you with hands-on experience on how to brainstorm design thinking, develop ideas for new business, and then you know implement it, uh, but also provides you with the network. We visited a variety of companies, which I found very useful. You get a chance to talk to a new startup that has been successful and it's in the process of growing. We had a chance to talk to one of the giant tech companies such as Intel and learning from their experience, I found very beneficial for me. One thing that sets this program apart is our custom designed curriculum. We work really closely with each group that comes here for the program to pick exactly the right lectures and workshops and company visits that will match their learning goals. This is the epicenter of innovation and technologies. Uh, you get direct exposure to professionals who are doing it, professors. They are very approachable and they're very willing to share with their knowledge and connect with you. All of our participants in this program, they love that they can really just come here, immerse themselves in everything that Silicon Valley and San Francisco has to offer, and then go back home and change the world. Silicon Valley Immersion Program was one of the highlights of my graduate education, and uh, it has connected me to San Francisco and uh, also provide me with the knowledge and confidence to perhaps start my own company at some point.
Wonderful. So along those lines, I guess um, I would ask if anyone had any particular questions, hopefully that provided at least a little bit of an overview of kind of what the program is, how we set it up, some of the places that we visit. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to chime in or as Natasha said, feel free to jump in onto the chat and ask away. Um, we are here to address whatever thoughts or concerns that you might have. Um, one of the things that I thought also might be helpful is for you guys to take a look. We just had a group come this last year. I'm happy to share that program schedule with you um, if that uh, makes sense. Natasha, does that sound good? Yes, of course. Okay, excellent. Well, hopefully you guys can all see this. I just made it a little bit bigger here. Um, so this is just to give you a sense. So we, like, as we mentioned, we, we do programs from two to 10 days. Uh, but in this case, uh, we often, uh, with this organization, do a five day program. Um, this kind of gives you a sense of what the week looks like. Um, as I don't know if you can uh, get a sense from this picture, uh, you'll notice that we start early and we end late. So it is a very busy, very intense, very, for lack of a better word, exciting uh, week that we provide while you're here. Um, we, often people come, we, give, uh, we start off with sort of an introduction of Silicon Valley and what makes it, you know, what has helped us have so many, as we would call unicorns or successful um, entrepreneurial ventures here, companies that are, are valued over a billion dollars. Um, so we kind of start off with that. Um, then we often incorporate things like um, Autodesk. They are, as many of you may know, um, really forward thinking in terms of utilizing a lot of technology. They do a lot of 3D printing. Um, they're a very well-known company in that space. Um, and so we will do things like take you on a gallery tour and, and get a chance to kind of play hands-on with some of the 3D printing. Um, you know, at the end of the first day, we um, do a workshop with you um, because the, the real academic uh, portion of this uh, week with us is so that you can learn to how some of the ways in which uh, companies in Silicon Valley best present their ideas to people who are venture capitalists or who might be potential investors, or even if you just have a business idea that you're trying to sell to the people in your organization, your C-suite. Um, so we help you practice crafting your communication skills and your pitch, basically, um, so that by Friday, you can actually uh, provide that to a group of judges and get feedback on what works well and what can be improved upon. So on Monday, we start, that, we start off that journey by um, having everyone sit through a workshop and, and get a chance to connect with some of the folks that have been doing this a really, really long time um, and have a lot of depth of experience and really can give you kind of the tips and tricks um, on what will make a successful business pitch um, for those of us that are listening. So that's something we, we nearly always do on a Monday. Um, in this schedule that we did last year, we got a chance to talk to people in product development. Um, so product development, you know, especially in Silicon Valley, we're specifically known for being able to, you know, work in a, in a really flat kind of in, um, hierarchy and management style and also a very um, agile uh, product development cycle, as many of you may know. Um, so we talked to folks like Gary Gutnick. Um, Gary is, I'm trying to think, he is at Facebook. Um, and so he has been a director or uh, in product development for many years at Facebook, so he's often, um, including this last year, shares his uh, perception and concept of what makes that successful in Silicon Valley, but hopefully, which would obviously be translated anywhere. Um, then we do some coaching on your, your pitches um, throughout the week. We often bring in uh, VCs or venture capitalists, people who are used to listening to business pitches on a regular basis, and again, they provide candid, real feedback, both on any business idea that you might be uh, communicating on this Friday or, um, or how it's being presented. In last year, we actually um, went to Oracle. Many of the companies, and, and you likely already know this uh, from your own travels, but many of the larger companies, DuPont, Oracle, Verizon, um, Accenture, uh, many, many others that I can think of have really have started what we call innovation labs, or in this case, um, user experience labs. 
Uh, and they are, a lot of them, because we are such a hub of entrepreneurship and innovation, um, they have these hubs throughout um, the Silicon Valley area, either San Francisco, Palo Alto, uh, Redwood City, um, you know, this, uh, San Jose, any of these areas. Uh, and, and basically what I found is a lot of these companies, we have so much technology now that um, it's impossible for companies to develop the products in isolation. So for them to go and figure out exactly what the product should be and then develop it, it doesn't really work uh, because they don't know what the consumer need is. Um, so what we find is they create these um, labs throughout and it's an opportunity for, if you have a business problem, you can bring, bring your business problem there. You can talk to the people who are experts in textiles like DuPont manufacturing or in software development, like the, in this case, Oracle Cloud. Um, and you can connect with them and say, this is the problem I'm trying to solve. And then they can look at that problem and you can brainstorm collab and collaborate together to figure out, great, this is how we would build software to help that, or this is how we would use a textile you know, or a um, material uh, to solve that challenge. So often we take folks to places like this. In this case, we went to Oracle Cloud, their user experience lab. Um, and then the next day we went to shuttle, uh, we took a shuttle to Intel, uh, which is down in Palo Alto. So we're based out of downtown San Francisco, which um, is becoming more and more important to the overall Silicon Valley. Many people want to live in San Francisco because it's a desirable place to live. Also very, very expensive place to live. Uh, but uh, that goes with the territory of progress, I guess. Um, so uh, more and more, um, a, a, an increase in, excuse me, a uh, larger number percentage of the amount of venture capital money is actually being invested in San Francisco versus Silicon Valley. So it's a growing area. Um, in any case, that's where we're located. One of our campuses, uh, USF campuses, is in the downtown area. Um, in this case, we took folks down to Intel, which is in Palo Alto. I'm sure you've all heard of Palo Alto before. Very famous area. Um, we went to the Googleplex and took a look around um, Google campuses. We have a lot of massive campuses um, in kind of that Palo Alto, Mountain View, Redwood City area. Area, um, because there's a little bit more space than in downtown San Francisco. Um, then we went to Plug and Play. Uh, many of you may be familiar with Plug and Play. They're a very well um, known um, incubator accelerator. Uh, they're multinational. Uh, they're very much a global organization. Um, so it, we took people there and we actually, we did a company visit, got a chance to see how they structure their business, what they look for, um, you know, for new, um, new ventures that they're looking to invest in. They, they've created kind of an ecosystem there at Plug and Play where you are, um, where they have uh, people who are ready to fund someone. We have, they give office space for uh, folks who are going to try to launch their business. And then they also have mentorship opportunities for people who are great mentors. So trying to create this convergence um, of expertise and help so that if you have a new and exciting business idea, especially if you're from abroad and you would like to get it off the ground, um, but you really feel like you need access to resources in a particular area, in this case, Silicon Valley, then you can come to um, have a three month stint and, and work and live in this environment so to see um, if you can get your business off the ground and they'll provide mentoring for that. Um, and then we um, spoke with uh, an Intel executive uh, at, uh, on strategic project management and corporate innovation. This is a great topic. Um, it's one that uh, the folks from the last uh, cohort or class selected as one that they wanted to learn more about. It's a really great way to balance innovation with strategic management and managing your existing business. So <clears throat> Kern Peng is wonderful and he's written, um, he teaches at Stanford as well as with us here at USF. He's taught, um, he's written a, a few books. I'm reviewing one of his books right now. Um, but Kern has mapped out after working in the Intel organization, which is one of the most innovative companies anywhere, specifically in Silicon Valley. He's mapped out a great way to kind of balance 
Um, how do we continue to look forward and innovate while we continue to manage and improve our existing business and grow that? It's a very difficult uh, balancing act. It's sometimes called the ambidextrous organization where you can do both of those things. Um, so he has a great lecture that he talks, um, that he spoke with our group about uh, last year. And then on uh, Thursday, we talked with uh, about top technology trends and really the fourth industrial revolution. So with Jonathan Reichenthal, he was the, he now has his own company, uh, but previously to that, he was the chief information officer for the city of Palo Alto. Um, so again, very well connected into smart cities. Um, what are the newest technologies? How are these technology trends you know, changing and evolving? What's the history of all of these different industrial revolutions? Um, and what do we kind of see for the future? Then we did, again, one of the... Um, uh, courses that the cohort previously chose was this whole idea of building and maintaining really high performance teams. So again, leadership management being, being that um, this is an MBA program, super important uh, for any of us to actually get things done. It's great to have good ideas, but we actually, in order to be successful, we actually need to get them done. And that is where management and leadership uh, principles come in. So we have some really lovely um, uh, professors here who have been with USF for a long time and they walk you through a whole bunch of different activities to kind of assess your own leadership and management style, um, give you some thoughts and tips and tricks. This whole time, you know, you are actually in a in a group working on the, you know, in your workshop and getting coached, you're in a group and your final presentations are group presentations. So this is an opportunity for them to kind of give you some feedback on how your group dynamic is working, what ways you, what things you could think about to try to um, uh, work through and optimize that skill um, so that you can take that with you after your, after you continue on uh, with your program and beyond. And then uh, we have a wonderful um, communications uh, coach. Um, he comes in and, and we do some high, when he says high impact, impact communication skills, he's being very accurate. <laughs> um, he really kind of pushes people's boundaries a little bit when it comes to present, presenting and communicating. And again, in the hopes that by Friday, um, you know, you have your best foot to put forward. And then on Friday, um, we, um, in this case, we walked through some innovation breakthroughs. Michael Chung, he has a, a social internet um, presence, um, which he is building all the time. He wrote a book that's quite thick, um, most recently, all along the idea of what are the biggest consumer trends that are happening and how do we best capitalize on those. So he's very entertaining, does a lot of keynote um, speeches and is a very dynamic speaker. So I always love to have him come in. Um, and then we talked a bit about, you know, again, organizational uh, change or basically how do you how do you roll out a large change in an organization? This was another topic um, that I believe the cohort had selected. Um, and so this really enabled you, you know, to think about, all right, so once we figure out what our big innovation is, if it's time to innovate or if we're balancing ambidextrously between um, new innovations and our big business, but we have to actually take action in order to make them work. You know, not only how do we manage and lead on a small scale, but how do we manage and lead and transform on a large scale. Um, and so that's another speaker that we have. And then you guys are on the hook. Um, so then our, our participants, it's their turn. They have the mic, so to speak. They have the pre uh, presentation and they get to show us uh, their presentation skills, their idea um, and give their pitches. And they do that to, like I said, you, industry experts, academics, as well as often um, investors. And then and that pretty much wraps it up. So uh, we also do some networking events and things of that nature. So in general, um, it can be a very exciting and dynamic um, spot to be in. So any questions on that before I continue on? Any thoughts, Natasha? Not as of now, uh, but if anyone has any questions, please write them down so that Rebecca can maybe guide her presentation towards that. Right. Can continue, Rebecca. Yeah. So, in addition, so just to give, so hopefully that gives you kind of a sense of what we do during the week. And there's also just a lot of opportunities. Most any 
day during the week um, there are activities that are happening you know after the program itself um, in which case we always encourage people to go to different networking events there are a lot of you know free um, or very very low cost kind of options in the evening um, it really is an ecosystem here in san francisco in silicon valley where People share a lot of information and expertise on what they think is happening. Um, it's well recognized that um, if you want to continue to learn and grow, um, you want to hear what's happening. It's, I think, more traditionally, maybe 30, 40 years ago, um, you know, people didn't share, right? We Innovation-wise, we had what we call closed innovation. We kept all the information to ourselves. We were in, a, you know, a, a particular organization. We had our new technology that we were working on, um, but we didn't extend that information or share. Those were company secrets that we didn't um, allow out um, to the public. Now it has really shifted. Um, it's continuing to shift more and more, um, especially really recently within the last 10 years. I think it is a much more open situation uh, because there's basically so much capability and technology out there um, that you know, it really is, you know, an idea is an idea, but you need to be able to execute it. Um, so, you know, a company is much more open about sharing their ideas and their perspectives on um, areas that we could be focusing on, et cetera, um, and, and opening that up to the public in the idea that they get feedback and then they can continue to iterate. So it's really becoming more of a community ecosystem, uh, really an opening, if you will. Kind of goes back to what I was saying about those innovation labs throughout you can't work in isolation anymore um, because everything is so interconnected. Um, and again, we have the ability with technology to move ultra fast, but we need to know what direction to go in. <laughs> so it's super important to get that feedback from either customers or other industry experts or hear what other people are doing in order to support that. So that's one of the pieces that's really nice about coming to uh, this particular area. So, um, you know, Along those lines, since there is likely a big uh, question in the room, I'm going to assume someone has a question on what happens if we can't go. <laughs> so um, I don't. Uh, how are things in um, Portugal right now? Um, I assume that things have slowed down considerably in terms of uh, COVID and and uh, the coronavirus and the spread of all of that. I assume, Natasha. Yes, I guess we're going like two weeks at a time. <laughs> so. We're waiting on what happens, how everything develops, but we had a step back, so a few a few cities had to had to close, or at least people only leave to work. Mm -hmm. So we're adjusting and still waiting every two, three weeks to see what the government says about everything. So we still don't know how everything's going to go like in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, um, I would imagine that's very consistent around the world. Um, we certainly are experiencing that here as well. I think everybody is sort of doing their best and then waiting to see how things are progressing. Um, you know, I will say this along, you know, along those lines, um, I'm a little tired myself. This is actually early in the morning uh, for me, not that early, but 10 o'clock-ish. I've been working for a bit already, um, but we were on... To, with a group from China last night until about 10 p.m. Um, and so I'm finishing right now a, a immersion program with a group. Uh, we had one group in the UK last week, and then we have this group who's in China um, this week. And so we actually are right in the middle of delivering a virtual program. So out of necessity, you know, um, sometimes we just are pushed into innovation, even if we didn't think that we were, we, that, that we would go in this direction. Um, obviously, there's a real reason for us to, this is, you know, we still have all of the connections, we have all of the company contacts, we have all of the speakers, we have all of the networking opportunities, we have all the academic projects um, that we can still provide. Um, and instead of just waiting, um, you know, and not knowing what to do going forward, um, we, you know, try to live up to our reputation here in San Francisco and Silicon Valley as being very entrepreneurial and very in mostly innovative. And so, yeah, so we've recreated our program to be 
100% online um, if that's needed. I mean, we'd always love to see people in person. Um, that was our preferred choice. Um, but certainly, we wouldn't want to stop sharing the knowledge and the learning um, because of any reason. So, so there, we, it is absolutely possible and really wonderful. We had a great, like I said, we, we're in the process of delivering a program right now, and, it, and I'm very grateful. It's been going incredibly well. Uh, we've had some amazing speakers, and we've done a lot of um, program development to make sure that it really was, um, you know, as great as possible. And quite frankly, you know, very good. So um, we are waiting for the, you know, additional feedback, but all the anecdotal feedback has been really positive. Um, so we're excited and we'll be offering another one in September, possibly a couple in between that. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so that is, we are planning, we are hoping for the best and hoping that we are all up and running and traveling around the world like we were so accustomed to doing. Uh, but we also have um, a backup plan and, and um, if that is not able to happen in the short term. So. Yes, as you said, we, we were kind of forced to develop <laughs> the areas that we were expecting not to work on in the next few years, um, but it's also good. And uh, regarding that, there, there are a couple of questions that a lot of, okay. a lot of our students have, not exactly uh, here in the panel, but, but it's important, which is, so regarding the, um, the speakers, I understand how you can manage that, but what now that you already um, that you are already um, developing or already had one program and you're going you are developing one now how do you manage the the like to visit the companies and maybe the networking events people want to understand a little more specifically how those kinds of um, areas of the program will work sure you know, it's um, it's good for all of us to always continually innovate, right? Um, and you know, it is fun, right, to go and go go quote unquote to Google or go to Intel. Um, you know, on the flip side of that, I don't know how many of you have heard of Sand Hill Road. If anyone has heard of Sand Hill Road, um, so Sand Hill Road is a very uh, famous um, road, and it's literally a road. Uh, it's right next to Stanford campus. It's in Palo Alto. Every VC, venture capitalist, uh, the people who have all the money who are deciding what companies they should be investing in, all of them have an office on Sand Hill Road. Um, the, it's very expensive um, in terms of like the actual uh cost for the you know the office space and all of that go ahead yes the actual square oh. meter cost of the yeah no you were saying that the, the it's very costly but it is the the cost of the um, like the offices they have there yes yeah it's very expensive ironically and i might even be able to pull it up for you in a minute Ironically, it is the most boring road that you will ever see in your entire life because it literally is just a road that has office buildings. That's it. That's all it is. So in some ways, it has a tremendous amount of um, value in terms of its importance and understanding the importance of it. But I will bring I often have brought people and driven down it sometimes stopped and gone through a parking lot and it's literally the most boring thing that you could see. So it's both important and unimportant. So that when we talk about company visits, you know, um, it's kind of remarkable that, you know, as long as you are understanding kind of where you are contextually, where it is, maybe you have a visual that kind of helps orient you so that you can say like, okay, yes, I, I see the building, I see the culture through the way they have presented it. Sometimes we do um, tours of the buildings, for example. Um, we also have done tours like down the street on, on how to get from here to there, things of that nature. I, you know, it's amazing that that is, that's more important um, be, than actually being physically in the building because um, usually what happens is we go to these buildings and it is great to see it and feel like you were there and take a picture. That's always nice. Um, and then you go inside and you go into a conference room that looks a lot like a lot of other conference rooms. <laughs> so what we found is we really, for our company visits, we've done a couple of things. We've um, tried to maintain as much of the 
um, orientation and context and background information on the company, who they are, how they're situated, where their headquarters are, and um, to create a little bit of a virtual visit. Um, as well as you know any tours that we have available um, that we create or have available. The other thing we've done is we've gone into more depth with our speakers um, because we have more time with the speakers. Often, if you go on a company, you know, a, a company visit, you are walking through the cafeteria, you are walking upstairs into the conference room, you are kind of meandering around. Um, this way, we have more of a concentrated amount of time with that particular company, um, and so we've asked them to go be beyond just, this is the company, this is what we do, this is who I am, this is my story. And instead, like in this, in this case of the, the one that we're doing right now, we've asked them to actually create like use cases on examples of, okay, I know you're studying in this case, um, you know, in the one case I can think of um, uh, business analytics. So here's a, a, an example of how our company um, handle the problem in that particular area. Here's our strategy. Here's what we did. So what we've decided to do is kind of go in deeper with our company hosts um, so that they can provide, you know, a better overview of the company, um, but also that is still interesting, but that we can get to more um, interesting information from a uh, from an academic or uh, perspective or information that aligns to like a learning objective um, a little bit more directly then you know it, it's fun to you know to walk around outside and so on and so forth but um, we feel like there's actually uh, better information and more meaningful things that we can do by digging in deeper so so that's how we've been handling the company visits um, and then in terms of the networking piece, so we, you know, we are going to figure out a way to do that. Uh, we've, one thing that we've done is actually mix groups of people and give them assignments and break them out into different spaces and have them interact, you know, a, with a particular topic and then come back. Um, so we've done things like that. Um, and, and we're also going to look at, we haven't done this yet, but we will look at trying to um, create times with which speakers can come and kind of intermingle um, in more of a social kind of situation with groups um, than they might normally be able to. So, yes, in fact, technology allows us to even break do breakout rooms so that people can speak to each other and then to some maybe some tutors or something that can help them develop the the. the the problem they have at hand so yeah exactly. a question that we have here rebecca is regarding that is, can you tell us a little more a, a little more about the hands-on project so i don't know if the person is asking regarding the um, the development of them if they have more time if they can they can bring some some projects that that they already have had like they developed in portugal and then they can bring there and do something more around that that thematic or something so if you can yeah great question really good question uh, a, a yeah. very good question can you see me okay am i breaking up at all no you're okay oh, perfect great question so we have a few uh, what we call open enrollment programs throughout the year. Um, so that's if you are an individual and you want to come directly to the program, um, you can do that. In those cases, we encourage you to bring your own business idea that you want to develop. Um, you know, regarding, you know, in a, in a group setting, we, you can do a couple of different things. Often in this, um, you guys are usually already in a group. And, um, a cohort, so to speak. So a group of 15, 20, 25, whatever the number is. Um, and so what we encourage you to do is think of your business idea ahead of time. Maybe you've already done some work on it. Maybe you're farther ahead. That's even better. And then on Monday, we typically um, divide people up into groups and we allow you guys to all share the ideas that you have come up with. And basically your team picks what do they want to focus on for that particular week? So uh, we really do encourage you to think of ideas before you come because it tends to give you kind of a jumping off point. 
um, just farther down than coming in and having no ideas and then having to scramble to come up with something. Um, but we've found in general, we've been doing this a long time, that tends to work very well um, because you guys share ideas and then if you've done a lot of work on your idea and it's a really good one, it'll be really easy for other people to choose that that's the one that they want to focus on. Um, so it works really well and it's a great way to help support your business idea throughout. Occasionally, only like one time I can think of, we did have somebody and they really wanted to do their own presentation. Um, you know, they had some support and so on and so forth. We're very flexible. So, you know, if there's a particular instance that comes up where we want to, where we have time and we can make adjustments, then we always make adjustments um, so that people can get the most. Our goal is for people to get the, the greatest value out of this. Um, but we find that the best way to do that is to think of business ideas ahead of time, bring them with you. If you aren't, you know, looking to be an entrepreneur, um, it's a great opportunity to jump in on somebody else's really great idea and help them go through that experience and, and gain that experience yourself. And if you have an idea already that you're working on, it's a great opportunity for you to further that. And like I said, we're very flexible. So um, if some situation comes up, we, we will always try to remedy it to make it uh, the, the best uh, experience that we can possible. Great, thank you. Um, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. and always regarding the company. So someone is asking uh, if you have new companies that are going to be involved in the program. So if you, you mentioned Oracle, you mentioned plug and play, right? If you have any other like news regarding that those that list of companies, um, so yes. Do you think the question is what are some of the other um, companies that we work with? Other companies, and if you have any new companies joining in the next program that you didn't have before. Sure. Yeah. Always. We are always filtering through. Um, tomorrow or no today we have. Um, HP. Um, so we have a speaker from HP who will be doing a visit. Um, now it's spun part of HP spun off and it's DXT Technologies, um, but it's the same parent company. Uh, we have done we do Salesforce, so we you know uh, we often bring people to Salesforce either virtually or in person. Um, Last week we had Accenture, uh, who you guys are probably very familiar with, Accenture. Um, we, like I said, we do have speakers from Googleplex, or sorry, from Google. Um, we have people from, we've had, like I said, we meant, I mentioned Facebook earlier. So yeah, we are always transitioning through um, different folks. Uh, Cisco is another company we take people to. Um, Airbnb we have, Tesla, we've, um, talked with someone about bringing we had had a group ready to go but then the the group had to be adjusted based off our current situation um so when the group comes back um either virtually or in person we will go to tesla um fitbit is another one um eventbrite uh yeah so we try to stay connected with as many people as we can it really makes um it dynamic we also have we usually do like a bigger company and then we do a startup company. So a couple of the startups we work with are, have a really great trajectory, really interesting story, very inspirational. So they're not as well known, um, but they get you a different perspective. Um, you know, if we always are going to Intel and Cisco and, and some of these bigger companies, you know, it's great to get that perspective, but you're not necessarily seeing the bridge between, okay, I'm an entrepreneur, I have a business idea, What's the next step, right? So we try to incorporate um, an accelerator or a, um, an incubator um, that kind of demonstrates, okay, what does that look like? Who are the players in that area? And then, okay, what does it look like when you're actually an entrepreneur and you're trying to, in that high growth area and you're trying to continue to grow? And then what does it look like as a more medium to large um, company after you've gone through? So we try to give people uh, perspective in each of those areas. In all of the stages. Yes, that's that's great. That's, because big companies, as you said, have a different different experience, and they started in different days. When to, when to start a company, a company was really different than it is today. So that's that's very interesting. Also, a question that someone made a few days ago. Uh, they asked me if what 
while uh, uh, this program occurs in, in San Francisco, if you have different cohorts or in, in different programs uh, at the same time and they are able to connect with each other and maybe network with people from all around the world? Yeah, such a great question. And yes, we do that as, as much as we can. Um, so whenever there's overlap, we try to incorporate that kind of networking. Um, we also have a, you know, a 11,000 students in our university. Um, most of them are, a good portion are in their undergraduate programs, but many are in graduate programs of some kind. So we have a, an MBA program that's full and part-time, and we also have an executive MBA program, which is kind of consolidated chunks of the MBA program. Um, and then um, we have a bunch of other, you know, MSOD and anyway, information systems and uh, data analytics and so on and so forth. So, uh, and mostly what, the group that we connect with the most actually is the um, Master in Entrepreneurship and Innovation. So we have a lot of, we have a, a master's program in that. So whenever possible, we try to uh, put folks together, you know, uh, to do that kind of networking um, and, and also, Sometimes we actually invite other people to this program. So occasionally, um, you know, if it's approved by, um, you know, our partners by ISCG and they're, um, if you guys are on board with it, I think last year we actually invited some people outside of your cohort to join and then they brought, you know, their own um, experience. Uh, one of them was a, a very senior person in, from Germany um, in their company. Um, and so that kind of makes it a little bit more interesting to, to do it that way. So we're always happy to bring people together um, to enable that. So um, I'll just show you here. Um, you don't need to see all of these, I don't think, um, but these are just some of the lectures that we, you know, additional lectures, love, hate relationship. So technology and public policy, trying to think about when we have all this great technology, how do we roll it out in a way that's appropriate? We've had a lot of issues around that with Uber and Lyft and some of the ride sharing. Um, we've also had Airbnb has created disruption um, in, you know, uh, neighborhoods and, and things like that. Also, a lot of the electric scooters have been very challenging in some of the metropolitan areas. So um, product development, you know, turning ideas into reality. Um, you know, these are, some of these are ones that you've seen. Um, yeah, so anyway, so we have a whole list um, and we're very open to figuring out how to best uh, find, find the elements that are the best for your particular program. You guys have done such a great work or ICG has done such a great work revamping the program. I'll be very interested to see how you guys want to structure it. Uh, but generally speaking, this program that we did just this past year was very, very well received. I mean, um, I don't like to be so boastful, but um, most of our the people who participate in our programs uh, rate us with like a 96, 98 percent, you know, satisfaction rate. I mean, people are very excited about the program; they really enjoy it. So we're very happy to create it again uh, for you. Thank you, Rebecca. We, yeah. I think we just yes, we just hit the 45 minute mark. <laughs> yes. Um, I think we had very interesting questions, right? And yeah. you brought a lot of the topics uh, regarding the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yes. Thank you everyone that, that watched the webinar and feel free to contact us uh, regarding this, this experience or even any other question that you may have regarding the, the program. And we can all always um, speak even with Rebecca and, and, and get to her our questions. So thank you once again. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next webinar. Thank you, Rebecca. Bye. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next Bye. time.